Good evening and welcome to the week five lecture video. Let's go ahead and start by praying. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today. Lord, literally every day we wake up, every day that you give us is a blessing. Lord, we just pray that your will is done in our lives because we trust you and we love you. We ask for protection against Satan and his schemes because that's the alternative. Lord, thank you for blessing us with this opportunity to be in college, but most importantly for this opportunity to go to college at a university where we can worship you, where we can pray to you, where we can relate this material to the plan that you have for us. Lord, we are surely blessed, and we know that you've put us here for a reason. Lord, we, we dedicate this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda. Okay. Uh, once again, I, I would encourage you to watch the <clears throat> worship video for this week, uh, Healer by Casting Crowns. It's, uh, it's a really powerful uh, uh, video, and it's very relevant at this point in time. Once again, I just want to review the three-prong approach to this course because it's very important. Prong one is theory. You're getting that through reading the textbook, taking the quizzes, and then, you know, uh, me reviewing the quizzes in class and, and just touching on things that I think are important. Prong two, the SPSS lecture notes. Again, you're not actually using SPSS. Okay, Instead, you're just watching it, seeing how it's done, but most importantly, focusing on the interpretations because next week, actually this week, you'll be getting the email, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking personality and gay marriage attitudes data and I'm running the analyses to assess your hypotheses, okay? So I'm gonna send you those analyses and it's basically gonna look like SPSS output and then you're going to have to interpret them, okay? So this is why doing these SPSS lecture note-taking assignments was so important. <clears throat> Prong three is research paper. So lectures, discussion forums, and other assignments, other assignments being the rough draft assignments. Okay. So again, I, I really like how we're doing this course because we're not getting to week eight and then saying, okay, you have your uh, research paper due. Hope you've been reading your APA manual and such. No, instead the paper is being written along the way. Okay. I'm giving these litter, little lectures you're doing these various discussion assignments. You're doing these rough drafts assignment, rough draft assignments. I'm giving you feedback. You're making corrections, so that's a good thing. Let's start by going over the quiz. What often creates bias in a internet survey? Demographics of those who use the internet. Again, you have to think of when I do an internet survey. Is it a random sample from whatever population I'm interested in studying. So for example, those in California or those in the United States. And the answer is, uh, yeah, no, it's not. It, it's a convenience sample because people are choosing to participate or not. And plus you have to figure not everyone uses the internet or has a reliable connection or, you know, is on Facebook or, or wherever you're going to uh, collect the data. A measure is said to be valid to the extent that it does what? It accurately measures what it's purported or what it purports uh, to measure or what it says it's measuring, right? Okay, so let's take the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. Okay, we're familiar with that, right? It's in personality and gay marriage attitudes. There's 10 questions. So let's ask ourselves the question, is the Rosenberg self-esteem measure a valid measure of self-esteem? So the question is, is it measuring self-esteem? Okay. And if we think it is, it's a valid measure. There's different ways to assess the validity, uh, 
including seeing what it's related to. So there's validity. Is it measuring what you think it's measuring? And then there's reliability. Is it consistently measuring the same thing? So if the Rosenberg self-esteem scale is reliable, if I take it now, honestly, and then take it again a little later, I should get approximately the same results, right? If it's measuring the same thing. A, a, a good example of validity versus reliability is if we're talking about a scale, okay? So think of a weight scale. So you step on the scale and it tells you how much you weigh, okay? If it's actually measuring how much you weigh and it's accurate, then it's a, a valid, okay? But reliability is something completely different. Reliability is, is it measuring consistently? Okay. So, so let's say you get on the scale and you weigh 180 pounds and you're like, okay, that makes sense because I've tried different scales and that's about what I am. Okay. But then you get on the scale again and it says you weigh 170 pounds and then you step off, you get on the scale again and it says you weigh 160 pounds. Well, perhaps <laughs> you think it's a valid measure of weight, right? Like it's measuring what you think it's measuring, which is weight but it's not consistently doing so, okay? If it's, a, if it's a valid measure, you would step on, it would weigh, you would weigh 180, okay? You would step off, step on again, you'd weigh 180, step off, step on again, you'd weigh 180, okay? Uh, if it's a, if it's a, a invalid measure, it would totally not be measuring your weight. Maybe it would be, um, it would say you weigh 30 pounds, which is, uh, not the case, right? Uh, but again, reliability, it, some, if the measure has low reliability, let's say it's approximately correct. So 180, but then you step off, get step back on, now you're 175. Step off, step back on, now you're 178. So that would be a, a lower reliability. A perfect reliability would be 180, 180, 180. How is face validity determined? by considering if what is asked is relevant to the study. To what does predictive validity refer? The degree to which the results correlate with something in the future. Okay. Do the results predict something in the future? So for example, in the case of the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, does that self-esteem score that you end up with predict something in the future? Construct validity relies on which two elements? Subjective judgments and empirical data. Why is high validity more important than high reliability? The correct answer, it's better to measure accurately than measure the wrong thing consistently. Okay? And again, we talked about that. Validity has to do with how accurately you're measuring it. Reliability is how consistently. So the argument is, it's better to measure accurately than measure the wrong thing consistently. Just remember, those are, those are uh, two, two elements. And really what that's saying, let's go back to our scale example, just to really make it clear to you the difference between validity and reliability, okay? If you step on the scale and you weigh 180, then you step off, you step back on, you weigh 175. You step off, step back on, you weigh uh, 177. Step off, step back on, etc. You know, it's it's not totally reliable, right? Okay, but it's about right. So you could say it's valid. But let's say you step on the scale and you weigh 30 pounds. You step off, you step on, you weigh 30 pounds. You step off and you step on, you weigh 30 pounds. In the second case, the reliability would be very high. It would be perfect reliability but it wouldn't really be measuring your weight. So it's better, it, the book argues it's, be, it's better to measure something accurately than measure the wrong thing consistently, which I think makes sense. 
Which of the following describes a basic reliability test? Measure twice and compare the results. Which reliability method for determining internal consistency is currently more common? Chromebox Alpha. And again, Chromebox Alpha is just a measure just to see how well the items in a scale hang together to measure what they think they're measuring. So for example, and you'll see this when we, I believe you'll see this when we look at the measure section. I believe I include a Chromebox Alpha, although I'm not requiring that you put it in for your paper. But essentially going back to the 10 items of the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, Chrome, a high Chromebox Alpha, let's say 0.8 or 0.9 would, would be saying that all of the 10 items of the Rosenberg self-esteem scale are hanging together to measure the same concept, okay? They're all coming together to measure the same concept, okay? If Chromebox Alpha was low, it would mean that one or more of the items isn't really measuring the same thing. And when you remove those items, let's say trim it down to eight items instead, then the Chromebox Alpha would go higher. So that's the idea here. A norm referenced test is designed to reveal what an individual's performance relative to that of a group's. And again, you see it there. What's you compare the individual to the norm or what's normal. Which type of test would be most likely to predict an individual's ability to achieve success as a physician? Okay. That's going to be an aptitude test. Which type of test would most likely which type of test would be most likely to measure an individual's knowledge of botany? An achievement test. Okay. So an achievement test is, an example would be, I had to take the psychology GRE. It was measuring specifically my knowledge of psychology. But then I also had to take the, the GRE, the graduate record exam, which is more general. And that, that was, uh, allegedly <laughs> measuring my aptitude to uh, succeed in grad school. So there's a difference. Which type of test would be most likely to measure an individual's ability to solve problems? This would be an intelligence test and there's various intelligence tests that exist. What do researchers reduce by observing behavior unobtrusively? Social desirability effect. Well, what does this mean? Uh, let's say you want to study the aggression of children on a playground, okay? If the children see you and know you're watching them, do you think they're likely to act normal? Do you think they're likely to exhibit aggression? And the answer is no, because when people are being watched, they tend to do what's socially desirable. So when you're observing behavior unobtrusively, it means you're like hiding behind a tree or <laughs> whatever, but the children wouldn't know that you're watching them observing their aggressive behavior. Okay. Therefore, you would, uh, you would uh, not activate the social desirability of them. Likert scale tests present what range of choices? So Likert scale are those, you know, str strongly agree, moderately agree, slightly agree, neither agree nor disagree, slightly disagree, moderately disagree, strongly agree, stuff like that. Because you, you have those Likert scale and then you can have uh, multiple choice questions like you see that with uh, gender, you see that with race, you see that with religious affiliation and personality and gay marriage attitudes. You could have true and false questions. We don't, I don't think we have any of those. And then open-ended questions. So th th that's just where people write text. Okay, so that is uh, quiz four. So definitely email me if you have any questions. Let's take a look at the agenda. Okay, so I have a few announcements to make regarding feedback. So as I said in my email, the article summaries look great. Like literally everyone 
followed the format. Everyone had the objective, the methods, and the results. So what I what I did, I wanted to challenge you all a, a, a bit. Uh, I literally gave everyone a five out of ten, and and um, some of you, of course, I gave some some more feedback because there were things that needed to change. But uh, some basic feedback I gave everyone was as follows. Okay. Remember, each article you find has to relate to one or more of your hypotheses. I just wanted this to be abundantly clear, right? Because we are in this online environment and I, I needed to be able to say this to you. So literally, you came up with your hypotheses. Now, the 10 articles that you're finding and summarizing have to relate to one or more of these hypotheses, okay? And I was telling a student over email, uh, let's say you have three hypotheses. Let's, you could have one article summary for one of your hypotheses, because maybe there just wasn't a lot of research done on it. And then, you know, three for another hypothesis and then six for another hypothesis. So you could do any combination. As long as you have at least one art article summary uh, for each hypothesis. So I wanted to make sure that you all understood that these articles that you're summarizing connect to your hypotheses. Make sure all aspects of each summary are clear. Ask yourselves the following question. So this is important, right? And what I recommend as you're writing this paper, okay, read everything out loud, okay? It's really helpful. You, you see errors that you make, okay? So ask yourself, is the objective of the study that you're reviewing clear, okay? State, state the hypotheses. What are, they, what are their hypotheses? Is the method used to study the objective clear, okay? You don't wanna to put too much, but you wanna have enough so we have an understanding of how these researchers studied their hypotheses. And are their findings clear? Okay, so I don't expect you all to be, you know, proficient statisticians and understand all these complex results you may be running into. But remember, according to APA style, which is which is the the law when it comes to writing these research papers, if you look at the first paragraph or couple paragraphs of the discussion section, they're going to review the findings in in English meaning not in stats. <laughs> also have another note here. If any information seems extra, delete it. Uh, the mantra of elements of style by William Strunk Jr. and E.B. White is omit needless words. Just make sure every word counts, okay? So here's the thing. There's a, there's a, the style guide is the APA style guide, right? So that's literally going to tell you how to structure your paper, right? But then there's also uh, guides like Elements of Style, which I believe is amazing, which focuses more on, on uh, grammar and better writing. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And their mantra literally is, if you don't think a word is necessary, cut it out because it will make your writing so much clearer. And don't, no need to use big words either. Use the simplest word possible to convey the meaning that you have. Uh, please do the following and, and resubmit for full credit, okay? So remember, everyone got a five out of 10, okay? Or most people got a five out of 10. No one got higher than that. And a lot of you already did it. You, you took this advice, okay? And you resubmitted and I gave you full credit. Okay. What I, what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to explicitly indicate which of your hypotheses each article is addressing, right? And place the appropriate hypothesis and reference before each summary. So what I was literally trying to get you to do is say, here's this hypothesis and this article summary is related to this one. And it could have been that all three of your article summaries were just related to one hypothesis. That's okay. But by the time we get to the end of the class and you have the 10 article summaries, each hypothesis has to have at least one article. Okay, so the next feedback that you're going to get is on your introduction rough draft, okay? Once again, I'll leave assignment comments by Friday. 
I'll try to do it sooner. So if you all want to drop by office hours, you can. So let me, I wrote Friday here, but let me try to do Thursday. We'll just have to see how it goes. Okay. And once I do that, I will definitely send you an email. And then something to consider is the next round of feedback is going to be next week. So next week is going to be a lot of work. So try to try to work ahead because we're going to have the methods rough draft and the results rough draft do next week once again it's all it's not all that scary because you know this past week you wrote your participant section of the methods this week you're writing your procedure section and your measure measure section so what do you do for the methods rough draft you literally copy and paste those all together participants procedure measures and there's your your methods rough drafts uh so <clears throat> i'm going to be looking at your hypotheses okay and I'm going to be, like I said earlier, looking at the personality and gay marriage attitudes data set. And I'm going to be doing the analyses to assess all your hypotheses. And I'm going to send that to you. Uh, and that's what you're going to use to write your results rough draft. So that's kind of where we're going. So definitely uh, get this week's work done early. And you could even submit the methods rough draft early. I think that'd be smart. And then you can spend some time with your results. Okay, so the first lecture we're gonna take a look at is the procedure section. The procedure section is actually really easy. Literally all you're doing is your, so what I did, if you go to the week five folder under files, uh, our personality and gay marriage attitude study is posted, right? So you've already seen it a million times. Literally all you're doing for the procedure section is you're going through and you're you're, you're, you're writing in detail. So this should be a lot of detail uh, what the participants participating in personality and gay marriage attitudes actually went through. So you can, you can just start like this. So I'm just going to stare at this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak it out. <clears throat> uh, partic participants received a survey uh, titled Personality and Gay Marriage Attitudes. Participants then read, read, pardon me, the informed consent. And if they consented, they placed an X and a date in, in the um, signature field or whatever. You can say that better than me. Participants were then asked a series of demographics questions, including age, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, country of birth, generation status, religious affiliation, family income, personal income, relationship status, college student status, anticipated GPA, overall GPA, major DPA. Participants were then asked a series of political uh, questions. They were asked to indicate their political party, their political orientation, um, whether or not they're a citizen of the United States, are they registered to vote? Who did they vote for in the 2004 presidential election? Uh, who, who did they vote for or would have voted for in the 2008 presidential election? Okay. And then uh, particip participants were then asked to indicate to what extent they supported the following issues, Iraq war withdrawal, prayer in schools, universal health care, so social security reform, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's same sex marriage. Part participants were then asked uh, to indicate uh, whether they voted yes or no on Proposition 8. And then they were asked to explain uh, why they support uh, same sex marriage. Then participants were asked a series of uh, validated measures, including the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, the balance F scale, the religious orientation scale, the big five inventory, specifically openness and neuroticism. Uh, participants were then uh, randomly assigned uh, to either write about uh, mortality or taking an important exam. They're asked the following questions. Okay, you could just throw that in there. Uh, next participants were asked to complete the, the PANAS, uh, do a word search puzzle, read a uh, pro-gay marriage undergraduate student essay, Eval evaluate the author, et cetera. Okay, so you, you see what I'm doing. So you could do that and, and let me, here, let me see if I had any other notes. Let's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's go to the paper overview, okay? Just so you can, uh, 
Hold on, do I, oh, I thought I had the paper overview open. Give me one second. Let me open it. So once again, the paper overview has been posted multiple times over the past four weeks. Now we're on week five. Okay, and really it's a template you can use. So, you know, we've already done We've already done this introduction stuff, so I'm gonna skip down. Here's your here's your uh, participant section. So we already did that. Measures we'll cover in a second. See, I put the measures first here, but pretty much you always start with the participants. You can put either the procedure or the measures first. Okay. So these are measures, we'll skip that. But literally you could just take a look at how the procedure's written here. This is a better one, the one I've highlighted. The study was administered in large holes or conference rooms, blah, 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 as you can see. So this is just it. So literally the procedure is you're just walking, walking the reader through what the participants saw in the survey. So try to make this at least a page long. That seems reasonable. If it's longer, it's longer. Like, let's see, the one that's highlighted, the procedure that's highlighted is from what I wrote for personality and gay marriage attitudes to, oh, I guess I, I did make it pretty long. You don't have to make it that long. I think mine was like three and a half, four pages. So do at least, do at least one page. That seems reasonable. If you're a page and a half, that's probably very reasonable as well. Okay, so that's it. I, I don't think the procedure is is very difficult. Just try to make it sound good, read it out loud. Make sure it flows. So let's take a look at the week five part one discussion assignment. Let me go ahead and share Canvas. Okay, week five. Oops, not sure what I did. Nope. Okay, week five there. Search launched. Week five, part one discussion. Okay. So all it says is write the procedure section of your paper. Be sure to watch the week five lecture video before you begin. So once again, what I'm gonna say is go ahead and go to the week five folder, okay? And open up personality and gay marriage attitudes to study and literally just walk through it. And, and do exactly what I did. Part two, respond to two other students. Compare what they wrote to what you learned in the week five lecture video. Also, please let them know if something is unclear and if possible, suggest a correction. And again, I keep on having you do this because it's important, right? So I'm gonna give you feedback, okay? But peer review is also really important. Literally, based on what you're learning in the video, okay? If you see someone not using personality and gay marriage attitudes for their procedure, but using a random article, you literally know that they're doing it wrong. So help them. <laughs> okay. And, and again, peer review just is so important. You know, as a, as a uh, senior, senior analyst, we're always working as a team. Okay. We're, we're always peer reviewing each other. And so that's really how research works. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the measures section. So this is slightly more complex. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna review a quick example for you. And I believe it's the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. And then I'll show you the measure reference list. Okay, so take a look here. So again, if you, if you go to the personality, hold on, my Zoom's in the way. <laughs> there you go. If you go to the personality and gay marriage attitude study, you'll find the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. Okay, so here are the questions, right? The 10 questions and people could say, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, strongly agree. Okay. So now, how, how does this work? Okay. You need to look at your hypotheses, okay? 
And you need to find each variable that's there. So let's say one of your hypotheses is, or we'll just go with research questions. What is the relationship between self-esteem and same sex uh, and a uh, degree of support for same sex marriage? Okay. Uh, what is the relationship between uh, gender and support for same sex marriage? What is the relationship between race and support for same sex marriage? So if I, <laughs> if I counted that accurately, we have one variable self-esteem, one's gender, one's race, one's su support for same-sex marriage. So you should have four paragraphs because you have four variables. Each variable is measured and that's the measure section, okay? So let's say you would have four paragraphs but we'll just work with one right now, self-esteem, okay? You can use this as a template. All your paragraphs could look exactly like this. So you could start off by saying self-esteem was measured using the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. Okay. You can literally, if you use the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, you literally just copy and paste this. Okay. Done. RSES, which is the abbreviation here, is a 10 item Likert scored measure. Well, we talked about we talked about Likert scored measures today, and you could clearly see it's a Likert scored measure. It's 10 items. Done. Responses range from one, strongly agree to four, strongly disagree. See one, strongly disagree, four, strongly agree. This, measures include, this measure includes such items as, I feel that I'm a person of worth, at least on equal basis with others. All in all, I'm inclined to feel that I'm a failure. At times, I think I'm no good good at all. And again, the citation, finish it off with the citation. So what we could have included here, but I just didn't for the purpose of this class, it would make it more complicated. I could include the Chrome box alpha, okay? Uh, and again, a high number there would indicate that all 10 of these items are hanging well together to measure a concept, which in this case happens to be self-esteem. At least we believe it's self-esteem, okay? So again, this is your template, okay? State what the variable is, state how it was measured, okay? Throw in a reference if it's relevant. I'll show you a list of references. And if you're using one of those variables, you need to include a reference. If you're not, then you don't, okay? And then note how many items. Is it a Likert scored measure? What are the responses? Okay, so you're describing it. And then what items does it include? So that's all you're doing here. And you're doing that for each of your variables. So, so let's try uh, gender, right? Because that seems like it might be weird. So you would say gender was measured using a multiple choice question. You could say that. Uh, participants indicated whether they were a male or a female. And, and honestly, that, that's that's uh that's all you have to state for that one so it's going to be super short okay uh let's look at but again if you can think of a way to describe it more go for it. uh race was measured using a multiple choice question uh participants uh chose uh from one of the following uh races if, par if participants chose other they were asked to indicate uh what their race was. Okay, so you kind of get it. Okay, let's take a look at, so again here, if you go to, where, I, where I'm pulling all, all these documents that I'm sharing, it's just under files on Canvas, week five. Okay, so I'm about to go here, week five, part two. and you'll see the measure references. Okay. So if, if you're using self-esteem, here is your reference. If you're using the F scale, here is your reference. If you're using the religious orientation scale, here is your reference. If you're using openness and neuroticism, here are your references. If you're using PANAS, here's your reference. If you're using the interpersonal judgment scale, 
here's your reference. All other variables do not have a reference, so you just describe them as I was doing. Okay. Let's take a look at the week five, part two discussion assignment. Okay. Copy and paste your hypotheses. That's part one. Part two, write the measure section of your paper. Be sure to watch the week five lecture video before you begin. Remember, you need one paragraph for each variable that is represented in your hypotheses. So I already talked about this. Respond to two other students. Compare what they wrote to what you learned in the week five lecture video. Okay. What does this mean? Okay. They're, put, they're pasting their hypotheses. Figure out which variables they should have included. Did they include all the paragraphs? If they, if they didn't include one of the paragraphs, let them know, okay? Now, if they include all the paragraphs, now see, did they describe them as I discussed in the lecture video, okay? Or do you see a better way they can do it? Okay. So assignments due Sunday by 11.59 p.m. are the week one, part one discussion, which we just discussed. <clears throat> You're finishing off the SPSS lecture five notes. So you'll be, you'll be ready to receive your SPSS output and interpret the output. Week five, part two discussion and the week five, or sorry, the quiz five topics 45 through 55. Let's go ahead and end with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this day. Lord, uh, thank you for, for giving us uh, uh, the, the strength to, to, to carry on. Research methods is, is not easy, but, but we're doing it uh, step by step, step by step. Lord, thank you for, for giving me the wisdom to uh, create this class in, in a step-by-step -step manner because I know it is making the process a lot uh, easier. Lord, we, we, we thank you for, for giving us the, the, the minds to even wrap our, head, our heads around this material. Uh, it is surely amazing. And, and Lord, we, we just ask with, with everything in life, but specifically with this right here in, in the moment, Lord, uh, when, we, when we look and we're like, man, this is hard. May we, may we step back and, and may, we, may, may, may we look at research methods as an act of worship. Where, where we we say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to use this intellect that you gave me to bring you glory. May, may that be how we approach uh, this material. Lord, as always, we ask that your will is done in our lives because we, we literally every day put, put our, our lives in your hands because we, we know, period, we know that through this life, in death, and in the afterlife, you want the best for us. We ask for protection against Satan and his schemes and, and the knowledge to do your will and stand up against Satan when you call us to do so. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And again, this is a piece that surpasses all understanding. Like literally, people who aren't Christians won't get it because it's not from you. It's not from this world. It comes from your loving father. It comes from Jesus Christ. Seek him first and everything will fall into place. Live as if it is no longer you but Christ who lives within you. And remember, you can do all things that God calls you to do because he gives you strength, not because you give yourself strength. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay.
Well, I'm gonna go ahead and post this video. Definitely send me an email if you have any questions and I'll have office hours Thursday from 4.30 to 6.30, okay? Have a great evening. Take care, bye.